There you go. Wait. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're all set now. No light. I could just make me co-host. I could, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. We're set. All right. Thanks. Uh, I'll just modify some things in Facebook because it's showing Facebook. I'll just edit some titles in there. So, yeah. I'll okay. be in the background as well. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Hey, Marilyn, how are Hello. you? How are you? Fine, how are you doing, Lee? Sure. Good seeing you. Kate. Picking up an echo here somewhere, but we'll, we'll ferret that out. Uh, morning, Dick. How are you doing? Just taking a break from gardening. Thank you, Wade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, it's going to be that time of year. I've got some work I need to do in the garden myself. Uh, Hi, Wade. Hey, Josie. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Always good to see you. Same. Thank you. I'm here and uh, Anne. Well, Hello again. Hello again. Good to see you. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, is that uh, Desi Kingman? Yes, that's who it is. Okay, hi. Hi. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. And Ellen, how are you? Thank you. Okay, welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, let's see, Tammy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Welcome to you as well. Thank you all for joining this afternoon. You want to watch? See, uh, somebody's on his iPad Air 2. I can rename you if you want me to. Okay. Let's see, Toby. Here it's, uh, Toby, can you hear me? If you can hear me, just uh, unmute and say hi. I'm really checking everybody's mic just to make sure I can hear everybody. So when you have questions, I can get to you. Hi, Kathy. I see you've unmuted. Hi. Hi. Welcome. So those of you who aren't showing your... Uh, your video, if you want to, you can just click that start video right beside your, your mute button. Uh, it's not required, but it's always nice to see everybody, especially when we start talking. Okay, I think I've spoken to everyone here. I'm going to go ahead and get started with some of my uh, housekeeping and setup issues. It'll take me a couple of minutes. It'll give a few more people a chance to come in that uh, are registered. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Mimi has just come in. Hi, Mimi. So let me go ahead and share my Hi. screen. Hi. Uh,
All right, so hopefully you can see my slides there and make sure you can see all the way to the uh, edge of my screen, uh, which is where my phone's gonna be. If you have pictures in the way, let us know and we can, uh, can help you move those around out of the way. Moving your pictures over to my other screen so I can see everybody. All right, and we've got that done. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everyone. We've got a pretty good sized class today. So uh, we'll probably end up picking up some background noise. And during the course of the class, if I, I we start to hear background noise or echoes or anything, I'll just mute everyone again. So uh, just remember to check your microphone before you ask a question or make a comment. Make sure that you're uh, unmuted. If you're not, just go ahead and unmute and uh, ask your question. You don't need to raise your hand or anything. Just unmute and ask away. You're on my uh, side monitor, so sometimes I miss, uh, miss a hand. So uh, feel free to just speak up. I'm also going to open the chat. And give me just a second to get that up and going. So if you are having problems with your mic, you can now uh, get through uh, on the chat. And Lester from our uh, Get Set Up TA group is here helping with uh, today. He's going to be monitoring the chat and helping to manage the class. So if you're having any, any problems, you can chat with him directly. Uh, thanks for joining us, Lester. Appreciate your help. All right. And I think that has us ready to go. Uh, like Toby's coming in with a different device. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, again, we may have a few more people join us midstream here, but uh, it, we usually take the first four to five minutes to give people a chance to get here. And we are five minutes in, so let's get started. This is Alexa Intermediate uh, class, Routine Skills and More. As the name suggests, there is a uh, Alexa basics class and this kind of picks up where that class left off and gets into some of the more intermediate and advanced skills. Uh, thank you for attending. Hope you enjoy the class. My name is Wade Yarber and I'll be the guide for your class today. Uh, very briefly about myself, I grew up in a small town uh, called Mason, Tennessee, uh, just outside of Memphis. And I uh, went on to get a PhD in psychology I got my degree at Mississippi State, my undergraduate degree, and went to West Virginia University for my uh, doctorate. Minded in uh, computer science, so I've kind of always been doing technology and psychology. Um, and so I've taught psychology in, at uh, several colleges, and but most of my career was installing and training users how to use healthcare information systems, working primarily in hospitals. Uh, so I had to do a lot of adult training. But what I love about teaching here at Get Set Up is that I get to teach people that are here because you want to be here, not because your uh, employer told you you had to come to the class or because it was a required class for the uh, degree you were trying to get in college. And that's what we try to do at Get Set Up is to create a way for you to learn topics you're interested in, uh, along with other people that are interested in the same topic. Uh, in an environment where you can uh, hear each other's questions and interact with each other as well as interacting with the guide. Uh, that's one of the reasons we do ask people to turn their cameras on uh, so that it, so it kind of fosters that sense of being in a group, but again, it is not required. We are recording the session like all of our sessions and you can get a copy of that by sending an email to help at getsetup.io. Be sure to include the name of the class so they'll know which one and the date you attended. Uh, I'm gonna put that email in the chat as well. In case you don't have that already in your email contacts, go ahead and put that in there. That really is your one-stop shopping for contacting us, any questions, comments, problems, complaints, send it to help at getsetup.io and it'll get routed to the right person. We're also live streaming the class today. So I do wanna welcome anyone joining us via live stream. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy the class as well. But I do want to stress that the only way to get that full get set up experience where you can interact with the other learners and ask questions of the guide is to go to our website and register for the class. And finally, get set up is not paid to promote any of the products that we train on. We are purely trainers. 
So let's look at the agenda for today. Um, we're going to go over a number of things, uh, including uh, setting up Alexa skills, setting up Alexa routines. We'll talk about what Alexa Care Hub is and several other things as uh, time permits. First, uh, if you haven't already, uh, this feels like that announcement at the movies back when we used to go to the movies, uh, mute or turn off your Alexa device. If not, she'll probably be answering and uh, speaking up uh, during the class whenever either one of us says her name. Uh, you can mute at the top of the uh, device. There should be something that looks like the same mute you have with Zoom. Uh, so you can leave her turned on and just mute her. That way, if you do want to talk to her during the class, you can unmute. So let's start uh, talking about Alexa skills. And uh, Alexa skills are really uh, a lot like apps on your smartphone. Uh, just like apps on your smartphone, most of the skills are written by uh, a company other than uh, Amazon. So they're third party uh, additions to uh, Alexa. You can enable and disable skills just like you can enable and disable apps on your smartphone. There are well over 10,000 skills out there, so we're not going to go over all of them by any stretch of the imagination. And the biggest difference between a skill and a command, the commands are something provided by Amazon. It's a built-in part of Alexa. Uh, skills are those third-party parts. And so you use the word open to activate a skill uh, is pretty much the biggest difference. And we'll give you some examples of that. Um, now, as we're going through, uh, we're just going to take questions whenever you have them. So anytime you have a question or if you don't understand something I'm saying or you need me to go over it again, just go ahead and unmute and uh, ask your question, make your comment. Otherwise, I'm going to keep moving through the material. So let's uh, take a look at this. So I'm going to open up my screen so I can get to my phone. So again, if anybody can't see my phone, let me know. But most of this, uh, what we're going to be doing today is manage through the Alexa app on your smartphone or tablet, any place you've downloaded the Alexa app. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Alexa app here. And uh, we're going to go into skills. So in order to get to skills, uh, we're just going to click more down in the bottom right. And come down here to skills and games. So this is the skills section. Uh, there's three tabs here. We're going to go over briefly. Uh, the discover tab is where uh, is basically where uh, Amazon curates the different types of uh, skills out there and recommends uh, some of them for you. So for example, the editor's picks has some of the ones that the uh, the editors like best. And you can see there's all sorts of uh, skills, uh, Alexa, Open Food Network Kitchen. And again, uh, that word open is typically the trigger word that routes it to the skill instead of uh, working as a command. Um, Headspace is a meditation app. So you can just say Alexa, open Headspace to uh, access that app. And there's others here that again are recommended by uh, Amazon. There are premium skills, just like apps on your phone. Again, uh, most of these are free. Some of them, uh, there is a charge for that app, so uh, that skill. So if you launch one of these, it will uh, ask you for uh, a payment for them, but uh, they are identified. So. so that's what's in the Discover tab. Uh, these are really uh, Amazon's recommendations. Categories tab breaks down all those 10,000 plus into categories. There are categories like newest arrivals, most recent uh, skills that have been added. And then it breaks them down into categories like business and finance, uh, using Alexa with your connected car, education and reference, food and drink. I'll just click into a couple of these at random. And if there's anyone anybody's interested in and specifically, I can go into that one. but. For example, within food and drink, uh, there's lots of recipe skills. So Alexa, ask recipe buddy how to make chicken marsala. This is another way that uh, they're accessed lots of times. It's say Alexa, ask something. And so Alexa actually asks the skill and gets the answer for you. So sometimes you'll say the word open, sometimes you'll say the word ask. 
Here it says Alexa open meal idea. So this is a skill that has all sorts of meal ideas. Uh, you can order from lots of uh, restaurants and fast food places. Sonic, uh, I know there's one for Domino's where you can order takeout, uh, etc. cetera. Okay. Wade? Uh-huh. Uh, I was trying to get on the Jeopardy one last night. I wasn't successful. What happened? I don't know. I I uh, I tried to play Jeopardy last night, and I guess I just wasn't doing it correctly on my hmm. new flex. Okay. Um, yeah. And with, without you know actually being able to see what's happening there, I don't quite know what it is, but uh, it does bring up a, a good uh, example. So if there's something in particular you're looking for, I mean, you could go down here and find uh, games, which is down here somewhere. But um, the other way you can do it is you should be able to search. If I spell it right. And, and so I wasn't sure if it was free or if I had to pay for it. It will tell you if it's premium. So here's, uh, and there's, I think there's several different versions of Jeopardy. Here's, uh, I think just the standard Jeopardy. Uh, and so the, uh, the command is Alexa play Jeopardy. Now for all of these, uh, just for other people that maybe haven't done a skill yet. So if I wanted to play Jeopardy, I would just touch here. And then uh, you would launch from here. And again, it, from here, it would tell you, it should tell you if it's a premium version and what the cost is. And it doesn't mention anything. Of course, it would have to ask you for a credit card or access to a credit card. But to uh, launching is like downloading an app. You launch a skill. Okay. I'll go, and, I'll go ahead and launch this one. And if you want to have it only accessed from a, a specific uh, Echo device, I've got three different ones. You can, uh, you can pick which one you want to launch it from. And at that point, it I should guess, be I guess what, what uh, scared me was in-skill purchase is available. So it looked like it cost something. Yeah, in skill typically means it, they're going to, uh, in the skill, it's going to say, oh, if you want to get the uh, premium version, you can do X, Y, Z. So they oh. will uh, try and talk you into doing it. I've got several of the music ones and the nature sound ones. And they're constantly saying, uh, you know, if you want to upgrade to our premium version, you can get, oh. and they'll tell you all the, so that's an in, uh, in uh, skill upgrade. Oh, thank you. So they're trying to get you to go from the free version to the paid one, of course. Thank <laughs> and you. you. And you can say no and, and uh, keep using the free one. So let me go back. Uh, and the third tab up here are the ones that you have gone in and launched and activated. And so I'm going to click your skills, which are my skills. And it shows me the ones that I've enabled and I like skills. I've got 84 enabled. Um, so lots of them are news related. So Alexa play NPR will play the NPR skill. One thing you, uh, you, if you come here for the first time, you're probably going to have skills, uh, activated and you're probably going to say, I never went in there and turned these on. A lot of these get activated when you're doing other things. And if you took my, uh, basics class, we go in and set up your, uh, news brief. And as part of that, you pick different, uh, news, uh, outlets. Those are all skills. So if you so that's where this one came from. I activated this as part of my uh, news update, and that activated this skill. So you're probably going to have some in here already, but uh, you can flip through all the ones you've got. And if there's something you don't want anymore, uh, you can click on it and go over here into settings and say disable that skill. I mean, there's really no harm in having it out there, but if you just want to clean them up and so you don't have such a long list of skills, you can disable something or if for whatever reason you want to disable it. Uh, and I'm going to, I'll just uh, demo a couple of these quickly so you can kind of see how they work. Uh, so a very popular one is Big Sky for weather. It uh, has more detailed weather than just the standard Amazon weather. So I'm just going to say, Alexa, ask Big Sky for the weather forecast. Uh, 
59 degrees with partly cloudy skies, remaining that way for the hour. You can expect clear skies throughout the day, though you might see some rain in the afternoon, when there's about a 16% chance. Today's high will be 71 degrees at 4.56 p.m., and the low will be 57. This evening, it should be partly cloudy, clearing up later. With an over I'm going to stop. You kind of get the idea. But it, it not only goes into more detail, and she'll give uh, some basic information, and then she'll say, do you want more details? And she'll get into all sorts of other information. Uh, the other advantage of Big Sky, from what they tell me, is that it really zeroes in on your location much more than some of the others. Whereas lots of times they're pulling it from the nearest big city. And if you're like me, then I'm 30 miles from the nearest big city. What's happening in Wilmington isn't necessarily what's happening in Southport. Big Sky tends to uh, zero in to your, your device and give you literally where you are based on your GPS. Uh, you can play ocean sounds and all sorts of different music. Uh, call my dog, just see what that one does. Alexa, open Call My Dog. Welcome to Calm My Dog. Would you like the standard or premium version? There you go, Ann. Standard. Thank you. Thank you. Calm My Dog. And she's just going to play classical music, calming classical music. So, yeah, so that one has a free and a premium. She wants me to upgrade to premium. I don't want to upgrade to premium. So, um, Daily stretch, it gives you a, uh, a stretch exercise every day. So you say open daily stretch and it'll walk you through a stretching exercise, uh, et cetera. Lots of different skills. Oops, make her stop. Sorry, I'm not sure. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Come on, there we go. When she gets started, she don't want to stop. Questions about skills. Okay. If your vacuum cleaner has uh, the, it? Uh, um, you. I'm gonna. Yeah, I can't get. I can't. Get, skin. Can, I hear somebody else talking, so I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, Marilyn. Go ahead. Uh, okay. If you wanted to use, and I'm gonna change the name, Sally, to um, run your. Remote vacuum cleaners, can you set that skill up? Uh, you can, there is uh, you know, the various, uh, the ones that are, are smart enabled, there's a skill for those. I, I remember seeing one of those when I was in skills. Um, so yeah, there are skills for a lot of these smart home devices that uh, have uh, skills for Alexa. So in that way you can enable that skill and you can just tell it to start vacuuming or stop vacuuming or whatever. There's skills for almost anything out there you can think of at this point. Okay, well, let's talk about routines next. Uh, routines, uh, basically what routines are uh, is you take a bunch of different things you could do one at a time by issuing multiple commands or executing even multiple skills. Uh, and you bundle them up together so you can do them all at once. Uh, your your flash briefing that we talked about in the uh, basic class, that really is a routine where it'll play multiple flash briefings just by one command. And they can include pretty much anything, music, news alerts, alarms, smart home devices, Alexa skills. Um, and you can set up uh, different ways to trigger the routine. So uh, most of the time you trigger a routine with the voice command, but there's other ways to do it. Uh, you can have it based on an alarm. So we have, if you set an alarm uh, to wake you up in the morning, you can set it up so when that alarm goes off, it will start a routine and do several other things. You can do it based on uh, a certain time at five o'clock in the afternoon, you can have it trigger a routine. So let me uh, look at a couple of routines. So I'm gonna go into the routines. And again, I'm gonna go down to the bottom right corner and routines are right above skills right here. And again, two tabs on this screen, root, your routines and featured. So featured routines are ones that uh, come with uh, Alexa. These are uh, configured by Amazon for you. So kind of give you a start. So these are already uh, programmed, if you will, and you can just use them. Some of them you have to tweak a little bit to make them work for you. 
but uh, you know, there are a start. You can program one from scratch uh, once you kind of get used to how routines work. So I've, uh, I've identified a couple to, to show you that are, I think are good examples. So one is dinner time. And again, I'm in featured. So this, this is ones that uh, what you would see on your device as well. So these aren't ones I've created. So I'm gonna click on dinner time to kind of show you how these work. So basically the routine starts with the name of the routine. And then when you say, and here uh, is the uh, a command that will trigger this routine to start Alexa, it's dinner time. So when you say that, then it says, what will Alexa do when she hears you say uh, this start command? And it has a bunch of actions already in here. You can add additional actions by just clicking the plus over here. But in this case, when you say Alexa, it's dinner time, uh, she's going to announce it's dinner time. And uh, if you don't, you don't know what announcing is, announcing will, it'll send it to every uh, Echo or uh, Alexa enabled device in the house all at once. So anybody anywhere in the house can hear it. So she's gonna say it's dinner time on all the devices. Uh, it will turn on do not disturb so that uh, no one can drop in to uh, while you're eating. You can set the volume up a little bit maybe, or, and set it to five, and then it's gonna play dinner music. So those oh. four things happen automatically when you say, Alexa, it's dinner time. Yeah. Wait, how do you get all of your Alexas or dots and, Oh, let's see, it's, I got about four or five, but one in each room, even in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. How do you get all of them synced together? I mean, it's uh, it's automatic. So you don't have to do it. I've got three. And when I'm counting the uh, smartphones and tablets, I've got seven. Uh, but yeah, the three echoes, you know, they automatically work together. Now you can make them work differently. And, uh, and that's the next part of the routine here. So in this case, it's saying, you know, where do you want this to happen? Where do you want to play the dinner music? And right now it says from the device you speak to, I could change that and say, have it do this from the uh, kitchen Alexa or do it from the office one. So, uh, so you can call out which Echo device you want something to work on. But uh, if you don't, the default is typically the one that you're talking to or the one is where it's going to do whatever you're saying, unless you've said, you can say uh, all, and it'll do it on all the uh, devices in the house. And you can even set up groups. So maybe you've got two upstairs and two downstairs. You can say, do it from upstairs, Alexis. So it'll do it on the two upstairs, but won't do it on the ones downstairs. We talk a lot about routines and get into that grouping a lot more in the, uh, Smart home class. I'm gonna. I'll show you a, how to, a link to that class after this one, uh, because when you're setting up smart homes, you you, know, you do a lot with routines. Does that help, Marilyn? Um, wait. Oops, sorry. Uh, wait. When you when you make a routine, uh, when you set up in the morning like alarm, and then add all the routines, it should happen automatically, right? Yep, so when that uh, alarm goes off, and I think it's when you turn the alarm off is when it triggers it, but yeah, it's based on that alarm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'll show you a couple more that are, are based on, in fact, I think this wake up one may do that. Uh, I'll show a couple more, and Marilyn, if you have other questions, I don't, this may answer some of them. If not, you know, go ahead and ask your other questions, but. Uh, Let's look at the one called Wake Up. That was one I'd picked. I can't remember how that one works, but it sounds like one that will work off an alarm. So here's Wake Up. And yeah, so here, uh, when does this routine trigger? It's when alarm is dismissed. So this is what we were just talking about. If you set an alarm, when you turn that alarm off, uh, and you can even say when it happens. So this only happens weekdays between 5 and 10 a.m., and here's what Alexa is going to do. She's going to turn on the lights. She's going to say good morning. Uh, she's going to give you the current time and she's going to play the weather report. And it's going to happen from the device you speak to. In this case, it'll be the device that's uh, triggered where the alarm was. And you could set up this routine of 
two different way, right? Like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, if I would like to have a different time, you know, alarm, and uh, if my husband wants a different time, can we do that? Routine? Uh, yeah, you could, I think you could, uh, uh, you, that would be interesting. It would have to have a different trigger because mm. um, I think if the trigger um, alarm is dismissed. I don't know of a way to get more discreet than that. So, so that's a mm. good question. There, there may be a way to do it and have two different types of alarm, mm. uh, but uh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, You'd have to have a different trigger. Instead of just an alarm is dismissed, you'd have to have a certain type of an alarm. Let me just go edit here and just to see. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Maybe a way to do it, but I don't know how to do that, Josie, if there is a way. Okay, thank you. Sure. And let's look at a couple more. I'm gonna go into my routines. Uh, pick a couple more here. I think you're, hopefully you're kind of getting the idea, but uh, here's another one that sunset lights. This one is based not on a, a set time, but it's on a, a situation. This says at sunset. So sunset changes throughout the year. So instead of saying at 6 p.m., you say at sunset. So whenever sunset is and Alexa knows based on knowing what the sunset time is going to be for that day. So it is based on what the uh, sunset time is, not when it gets dark. It doesn't have a dark light detector. She's going to uh, turn all the lights on at 31%. So they're, they're on, but they're kind of dim. So very simple one, but that's a nice one in case you're uh, not home. The lights will already be on when you come home. You could have it do other things as well. But uh, it, well, it does depend on whether you have those smart lamps or things like that to exactly. To do yeah, that. in this case, um, th yeah, this is kind of getting in again a little uh, intro into the uh, smart homes. So yeah, you do have to have those smart devices for that one to work. Now you could have her play music or do something else at sunset, but uh, uh, in in this scenario, I I do have smart lights, and so it turns on my smart lights. Other questions about routines? Are those starting to make sense? Mm -hmm. I've got other examples, but I don't want to belabor this one too much. Uh, I'll do just one more because uh, that's one that I do every day when I go into uh, get up in the morning and go into the kitchen. I uh, tell Alexa good morning. So when I say good morning, she turns on the lights in the kitchen. She tells me something new. It's usually about what happened this day in history. Uh, she plays the weather report and then she starts shuff shuffling my instrumental favorites. So I got one smart home thing here, but the others are all pure Alexa uh, features. Okay, all right. Unless there are other questions about routines, we'll move on. We've got a lot more to cover. This one is kind of quick and simple, but it's uh, it's a nice feature uh, and it does have a, a free component to it. So it's something called Alexa Guard if you haven't found this one yet. And basically what Alexa Guard can do, it'll send you uh, notifications if Alexa detects certain sounds such as a smoke alarm or breaking glass. So it's like a, a, a mini home uh, alarm system. Uh, to activate this, all you have to do is go into settings. So let me show you how this works. We're going to click on more down here and go into settings and then scroll down to guard. Uh, where'd you go? There, there it is. Here's guard. And uh, this is one where there's a, a free version and then there's a Guard Plus. Guard does cost money. But for the free version, which is what I've got, the way I've got mine set up is that uh, when I go away, it will let me know if it detects a, a smoke alarm or a carbon dioxide alarm or if it detects what it thinks is broken glass. So if she detects any of those things, uh, I'll get an alert on my mobile device because since I'm by definition not home, uh, I can't hear it on the uh, the echoes. 
I can uh, play a recording of the sound she heard and see if I agree that that is a smoke alarm or a CO2 alarm or sounds like somebody broke the window and got into the house. You can also drop in. And if you want to drop in and listen some more to see if you hear somebody walking around or see if that alarm is still going off. It's uh, to, uh, to activate it. All you have to do is this is the status right now. It, it knows I'm home. I'm going to touch that. And it's now in away status. Alexa started guarding your home. So I'm now in away mode. Oh. And uh, when I get home, I just click it back to that I'm now home again. I really like this one, you know, because, you know, if there is a fire or something and you're not home, uh, you could have a lot of damage before a neighbor realizes your house is on fire and calls the fire department. Now, this way you're going to get an almost immediate uh, alert that it's there's a fire in the house. It can also, you know, yeah. let me click to the next slide. So here's what you get with the free version. So with the free version, it does the smoke and uh, carbon dioxide alarms, uh, breaking glass, and it'll turn the, uh, the lights on and off to make it look like your home. So if you have a way turned on and you have smart lights, obviously you have to have smart lights for this one, it'll you know, turn the lights on and off, you know, simulating that somebody's in the house. It'll kind of randomly turn them on and off. If you bump up for the five buck a, a month, it uh, also uh, will call emergency help uh, and uh, it includes activity sounds. So if it hears something that, like it sounds like somebody's walking around in your house, uh, it'll also has, <laughs> this is interesting, sounds of dog barking when it detects motion inside the house. It'll, so hope it'll make them think you've got a dog. Not sure how effective that is, but it's okay. And it'll sound a siren when activity is detected. This is probably more valuable. So it's again, it's like a little mini home alarm system. It'll uh, through the echo devices, it'll play a siren. Wade? Uh-huh. Um, the first one, call emergency helpline. Hence, is that uh, like uh, 911? I, uh, I think, I'd have to look this one up, but I think this is if you have a, uh, a home security system already, it will call oh. that home security system uh, just to make sure that they know that there is a potential emergency at the home. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's what that one is. It's, uh, I'd have to look at that one again, but yeah. Uh, Alexa can't call 911. That's one thing it does. she doesn't do yet. Uh, I think there's some technical reasons why, but uh, that she doesn't call 911. That's what I really need. <laughs> yeah, she can call the police. She can call uh, any person, but uh, she can't uh, call 911. So I, I recommend, you know, people put, because uh, you can, uh, she'll call any contact. So, uh, so if there is an emergency and you've got the police department uh, phone number in your Alexa contacts, you can say, Alexa, call the police and she'll call the police station or Alexa, call the ambulance and it'll oh, call good. the ambulance service. So you can program in all those contacts. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Uh, let's move on. If there's no questions about that one. This is another uh, feature that is, is pretty nice. Uh, it's something new and I haven't researched it a whole lot, but it's called Care Hub. And it's really designed to allow you to monitor uh, a loved one's activity, someone that is probably living alone and uh, may need some help. And uh, one thing they can do if they need help, they can just say, Alexa, call for help. And it will call and message the caregiver. Uh, but it does more than that. Let me kind of show you how this one works. So here, I don't have this one live on my phone, so I can't demo it, but here's a, a screenshot. But let's say I had this set up with my mom and uh, there's several things I can do. The activity feed shows you what that person has done. So you can kind of see throughout the day, okay, they're, they, uh, every, it's been every couple of hours, they've talked to Alexis, so I know they're up and moving around and doing their normal routine. You can set up alerts. Uh, so for example, maybe mom, uh, it gets up about 7, 7.30 in the morning and she always checks the weather first thing in the morning. So I could say if there's been no activity uh, by 10 o'clock, send me an alert, let me know that there's been no activity because uh, that's not normal. Or you can just say when the first interaction of the day happens with Alexa, the first time that she uh, 
talks to Alexa, it'll just send me a, an alert saying, mom, uh, check the weather. So you can, you can really monitor that the person is up and uh, doing her normal routine. And again, they can uh, initiate a help call and you can do the normal uh, things. But in this case, you know, you can always drop into your own Alexa devices. In this case, you have to connect your Amazon uh, account with their Amazon account, but then you can drop into their Alexa device to listen to see if you can hear mom and say, hey, mom, you there? in case she's there, but, you know, is having trouble and, or you can call or you can message. So I can show you where this lives if you're interested in it. And if you, I'm going to include a link in the email that comes out after class to get more information about it. But uh, in terms of the Alexa, if you click on more down here and then actually have to, to click on this see more, so it's a little hidden. And there's Care Hub. And it actually tells you a bit more about it here. And it, it walks you through the setup process. Again, you have to, obviously, the person you're monitoring needs to have an Alexa and their own Amazon account. So you got to link your accounts. But it, uh, from what I saw from the video, it walks you through that whole process, makes it fairly simple. I know one of my classes, there was a lady that uh, lives alone and she has a friend uh, that also lives alone. So they were going to set it up just between the two of them so they could kind of monitor each other to make sure that uh, each of them was OK. Uh, questions about that one? Uh, this one was kind of interesting. I, uh, the rest of the class is just kind of tips and tricks and things that I've, I've stumbled across. But if you have a show, and uh, if you're not familiar with the show, so with the Alexa, you can have a smart speaker, which is like uh, the ones that I have. So they're just um, a speaker you can talk to and you can hear Alexa talk back. But they also have a show which has a, dis uh, a display connected to it. Uh, your phone is also basically a show as well. But there's some things you can do with a show that you can. Anybody not know what the show is? I could jump into Alexa and show you the Amazon. Let me do that. No, quick. I don't. Can yeah, because we got. Show us, uh, please? Yeah, we're we, we're doing good for time. Let me just jump into Amazon real quick and. Uh, so these are the uh, smart speakers, and these have been around for a long time. These are, this is the one that I'm using. Uh, which is the third generation. This is the fourth generation. They've gone from the hockey puck, they used to call it, to the one that's more like a baseball. I'm sure the sound is better with this one than it is with mine, even though this one has great sound, I think. Uh, but that's the smart speaker. And, um, and these are the uh, different variations of the show. And it looks almost like a smartphone, but it has a speaker, uh, but it has a display. And they start, you know, and the bigger the display, the more expensive. This is the entry level. So it's a, a five inch display. So it's about the size of a smartphone. They got a bigger one that I'm looking for. Oh, here. This is kind of the, the top of the line. So it, it actually looks like a big speaker with a, uh, a tablet stuck onto it. But, uh, but that's the show part. Yeah. Okay. And so what happens if you, you know, like, in, like it's showing you here, uh, if you ask what uh, what's the weather, uh, oh. with the speaker, she would give you the weather. With the show, she would give you the weather, but she would also show you on here what the weather is. Uh -huh. So, okay, but, thank uh, you. Yeah, so that's a sh that's what the show uh, is. So, in terms of a couple of things you can do if you have a show, because it does have a camera built in, which I didn't know when I saw this. So you can take and send photos with show. It's kind of like your own little personal photo booth. So you can get several people if you want to, you can do it with just yourself, but you can get several people in front of the show and say, Alexa, take our picture and she'll take a picture and display it on the show. If you don't like it, you can delete that picture and take another one. When you get the uh, one you want, you can say, Alexa, send this photo to, and then give the name of a contact. So you can say, send the photo to mom. Uh, this was in an article I was reading about things you can do for your mother on Mother's Day with Alexa. So I thought that was kind of uh, 
interesting and creative. And I didn't know that it had the cameras built in. So that was uh, something new to me. So. Uh, and uh, there's, I, I've kind of shown a little bit this off and on, but I want to talk a little bit more because, you know, people forget that your smartphone is an Alexa device. If you've downloaded that Alexa app and you saw me using it like a, 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 a device already today, I would touch here and then I could talk to Alexa. Uh, so there's several things you can do for your smartphone. So you can uh, tap and talk to Alexa. You can also set it up so it's hands-free. Uh, I have a, an iPhone and of course Siri is activated on the phone, but if you wanna to talk to Alexa in addition to, or instead of Siri, you can set it up so you can just say Alexa uh, and she'll answer hands-free. That is a setting, so let's go into that. So we're gonna go down here to more again and go into settings. And scroll to Alexa app settings right there. And then enable hands-free mode. I have it turned off on mine because I've got Alexa devices all over the place. So I don't typically need or want my phone to be answering. I want the uh, Echo to answer. But if I'm going to be driving my car somewhere else, then I want to actually just be able to reach Alexa without having to go to the app and touch that button. I can just turn that on and then turn it back off again when I get home. Some of the other things you can do with the phone is from your phone, you can do drop in and announce. So uh, to do that, you go to the communicate down here. And uh, here's drop in. Uh, if you don't know what drop-in is, I'll explain that again really quickly. We talk about that in the other class as well. But what drop-in is like an intercom. So if my wife is in the kitchen and I want to talk to her, instead of calling her on the phone or yelling across the house, I can just click drop-in and then say what device I want to drop into. And I can say kitchen. And... And... Actually, I can hear a voice in there. <laughs> I'm going to hang up. So it's so it's like an intercom when you've uh, when you've dropped in. There's an open channel between your device and that device. You can drop in Echo to Echo, but you can drop in phone to Echo as well. So you can talk, or if maybe you heard a sound. You thought you heard a sound in the kitchen, and both of you are in the bedroom. You can drop into the kitchen and listen and see if you hear somebody walking around in there. So it's, sometimes it's good for security reasons as well. And the difference between a drop-in and announce is drop-in, you pick which uh, echo you're dropping into. Announce, it will, uh, whatever you say, will go to all the uh, Alexas. So that's like the thing about it's dinner time or whatever, or maybe I don't know where my wife is, so I just announce. So it's, uh, it'll talk to all the echo devices, no matter where she is. So well, I can be out in the yard and need to need her to do something real quick. I can just get my phone and announce and talk to her. Yep. So my Wait, does the, yes. Does it make a difference as to what generation of, cause I'm looking at mine and when you said it would recognize all of them and um, I can't see where they're linked at all, because like I said, um, I would like to get an announcement throughout the house. If I have a reminder, it looks like I have to be in the kitchen to get that reminder. It's not sending it to the bathroom or the bedroom or my yeah. phone or any of those of the things. Yeah, there's some rules or in terms of how those work. So if I set a reminder uh, on a certain device, it's gonna remind me back at that device and only that device. So it doesn't always send everything everywhere. Uh, same thing, if you uh, set a, uh, an alarm, it's going to play that alarm only on the device where you set it instead of on everyone. Um, there may be some way to override that and, and, and tell it to do it everywhere. I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. Uh, I can show you where the devices are uh, down here at the bottom. Uh, see this icon that says devices? If you click that, then you can go into Echo and Alexa. And here it shows me all of my devices. 
I've got one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, and one in the office. So it'll see all of my devices. But most of the time, it's only going to uh, it's it's going to interact with the one that you talk to to set something up, where you set the alarm, okay. or where you set the reminder, or where you turn on a timer. It's going to just uh, respond back to that same uh, device. Okay. I don't know if anybody else Wait. knows the way. Yeah. How do you make a call? Okay, good answer. Good question. We're going to get there. Uh, almost there. So. And let me do that. And then uh, that's the last thing I'm going to cover. So we'll, if there are any other questions, we'll have a couple of minutes left. Uh, before we go, let's talk about playing music, because that's, again, something that a lot of people like to do. So if I'm uh, in my car and want to play uh, music through Alexa, I can do that from my cell phone. And that's this play right there. So I can click, click play and basically go in and do anything I could do. I can pick different music, uh, any other services I'm linked to. So here's Amazon. I can uh, play my playlist. This is my likes playlist. Uh, other uh, lists that I use a lot. I link to Pandora so I could play Pandora music through here. I could also issue the command and just say Alexa play music. Uh, but I can come from here as well. And it's actually shows me what's playing. In this case, this is and it says kitchen here. Oops, I'm getting an alarm that I want to go that way. Sorry about that. Uh, so it's it's telling me right now the kitchen Alexa is playing uh, this uh, see at night music. I could stop it from here if I want to stop it from here as well. So you can uh, use your phone to control music. And then the last thing is how to make a call with Alexa. So um, let me show you how that works. So again, we're gonna to go to the communicate down on the bottom and call. Uh, so I'm gonna click the call icon. A call is different than drop in. So drop in, it just opens a, an open channel between the two and uh, anything either side says or does, the other one can hear it. This is like a, a phone call. So you're actually calling and uh, I can call into a device though. I can call the kitchen and it'll actually ring in the kitchen and someone's gonna have to answer before it initiates that call. Whereas if I drop in, it automatically links. Uh, but I can also call a person so I can get down here to my contacts and pick somebody from the contacts. I can search for a contact. I'll search for my wife. And there she is, Michelle. So I can click here. And if that person has uh, Alexa uh, enabled, I can actually do an, an, uh, an Alexa audio call or an Alexa video call, or I can call, just call their phone and it'll just call their phone. If I do an audio call, it's gonna not only, it, it's going to call all the Echo devices owned by that person and call their app, their smartphone. In fact, I hadn't done this before and my wife and I tested this right before class. So I, I did an Alexa audio call and the three Alexas we have are under her account. So it rang on all three of the uh, Echo devices and it also rang on her phone. Now, if I wanted to just call her phone and not have it ring the Alexa devices, I could call down here and if, if the uh, Alexa devices are shows, then you could do a video call. Ours are all smart speakers, so there's nothing video to call. But that's how the, uh, the call works. Did that answer who was asking about calls? Does that answer your question? I want to say I call my sister all the time, on, and she lives in Houston. <laughs> huh? you, just, you just say drop in, and they ask you the contact you want to drop into and so I call her on her her uh Alexa in Houston I mean yep. you, you don't yeah you can drop in to another you have to uh connect the accounts it's like that uh, uh the one I was showing you earlier so you can't just drop in on anybody if, if my neighbor has an Alexa I can't drop into their Alexa uh you have to connect your accounts and each one of you agree to let the other person drop in 
But if you do that, then yeah, you could drop in. My if my dad had one back in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, I could drop in on dad, and uh, we could talk through uh, through our uh, Alexa devices instead of having to call on the phone. Yeah. But. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of the last thing I was going to show. So let's just open it up for. We got a couple of minutes. Ooh, yeah, just a couple of minutes. But uh, for I have a question, other... Wade. Yeah. Um, this is Anne. Um, which one is better? I want to get one of these devices, either the Flex or the Dot, for my uh, emergency person so that I can have direct access to her. Is the Flex or the Dot better? The Dot is more versatile. And actually, right now, they're running some great specials. Uh, it's I know. I just ordered four. <laughs> <laughs> right now because the uh, last time i looked the flex and I'll, I'll go there in case people don't know what the flex is but the the, the volume the sound is so much better with this one especially if you're going to play music it's a bigger okay. speaker so that's the advantage of the uh, dot versus the flex let me just right. do the flex real quick here i'm curious if they dropped the price of it too um i think it's 24 it usually is $24 and it still is. So right now it's yeah. pretty much the same price for a flex or for a, uh, uh, a dot. So that's really a good deal for the dot. I bought three flexes and four dots. And again, for people I, that don't know what it is, you just plug the flex into an electrical outlet. Yeah. And but so it's really I, easy. I did, this, I did this because of the last class, your basic <laughs> class. Okay. I convinced you. Yep. Yes. It's great. And what we talked about in that class is that, that have it so anywhere in your house, uh, Alexa can hear you is, a, again, a security feature that if you fall and hurt yourself and you can't get up and your cell phone's on the counter, uh, you can just say Alexa call and give them the name of a family member or whatever you've got in there. And uh, Alexa can hear you from anywhere. And these are also real easy to move around. But, uh, but they're fairly inexpensive. But right now, the dot is the same price. So that's a great deal. Seven of them. <laughs> you're doing great. You're, you're, you're ahead of me now. Okay, so uh, yeah, one last quick question. One, uh, one thing that I just, just a comment. Uh -huh. I love my Echo Dot. I love the fact that I can be anywhere in my room and say, Alexa, call such and such. And they'll ask me, is it mobile or home? I can say it and it automatically calls. Now, when my phone went out in a storm, And your phone, your you just went out, Nadine. Or can't hear you. You're on mute again. You must have. I was, I was able to tell everybody that I was. Okay, you just couldn't get me by my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't use the cell. So that's a great point. It's using uh, Wi-Fi basically. So, uh, so lots of times, if you're if you you don't have your cell phone or you don't even have your landline, uh, there's a good chance you can get there as long as you've got your uh, your. Uh, Wi-Fi is working, you can call with uh, Alexa. Yeah. And as she mentioned, you can even call any number. So if, if it's not in your contacts, but you know their phone number, you can say, Alexa, call 919-243-4416. And it'll call that number. And it can be a landline, as uh, Nadine said. All right, so I do need to run to the closing now because there's a few things I want to make sure I tell you here in the closing. Um, so. Um, so I do want to thank you for attending. This is the end of the official class uh, and hope you enjoyed the class and learned some new tips and tricks around uh, Alexa. Uh, a couple of related classes. I've already mentioned one of these, the introduction to smart homes. Uh, in that class, it's not uh, necessarily an Alexa class. We talk about doing smart homes with Amazon or Google or Apple, but uh, we do talk a lot about Alexa in there. And uh, we're going to have a new class coming up. Uh, we just put on the schedule. Let's talk Alexa, smart homes, and TV with Wade and Donna. Donna teaches a lot of the smart TV classes. So it's going to be just a, a get together talk type of a class, not a, a lecture class where you can share ideas, share tricks, ask questions around Alexa and smart homes. Uh, so if you're interested in that class, I'll show you how to get to that class as well. So in terms of closing, you know, after class, there'll be an email coming out that'll have several sections to it, uh, class notes. And in the class notes, there's gonna be links and there's a lot of links in this one. Uh, we'll have links to some uh, websites about Alexa. 
Uh, actually, those two classes I just showed you, I have links in the email to both of those classes, the Smart Home class and the Let's Talk Alexa class. Um, and uh, there'll also be, uh, I think, some additional links in there. So a lot of stuff in the class notes sections. Be sure and get that email and check out the links there. If you want to recommend the class to someone else, you can send a link uh, via your Facebook page or through email, whichever you'd rather do. There'll be links to some other classes you might want to attend. Click on those links and go straight to the classes. Give feedback, opens up the feedback form. Only two questions very quick. Uh, we really appreciate your feedback and hope you'll take a minute to do that for us. And then uh, the, the last link in that email is view schedule. And if you click that, it will take you uh, to uh, our homepage where you can book another class. We hope you're enjoying the Get Set Up community. And uh, if you are, there are some additional things you can do. And this is the other thing that's in the email that I forgot about. But uh, if you'd like to host an interest group, and we are trying to get an interest group started around Alexa and smart homes. So if you're interested in uh, being part of that group or even hosting that group, uh, there'll be a link in the email to uh, uh, an email address to me to let me know that you're interested in being part of this group. I'd love to have some or all of you be part of that group and help get that launched. I think it'll be a great group. Uh, lots of people have Alexa and have used lots of creative things. And so it's a a way to share what you've been doing. If there's another class you'd like to see us offer, or if you know of an organization that would be good for us to partner with, uh, any of that, you can send to help at getsetup.io. Uh, but I do have a special email address uh, around the uh, Alexa interest group if you're interested in doing that. And that will be in the email that comes out after class. And then that last link takes you to our homepage where you can book another class. And uh, we are out of time. Uh, I do want to thank you for attending. I hope you enjoyed the class and learned some things about Alexa. Hope some of you will uh, be interested in uh, helping uh, get that uh, interest group off the ground. And uh, I think you'll all enjoy that as well. So um, that is the end of the class. I want to thank you thank all for you, attending. Wade. I've I hope learned you enjoyed the class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. All right, Happy bye -bye. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. <laughs> and the fathers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.